the GMC studio, it's time to sit down. Well, Brian, you're standing. Standing. So I guess I'll sit and you'll stand okay. as we talk with Brian Johnson from the Fulton County uh, Community Foundation. Sure. That is correct. I said it all right earlier. I even incorporated Northern Indiana yep. Community Foundation earlier, and then my brain went blank. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're doing this without a practice run here. So. Yeah, but we, yeah. Need, we need to uh, start practicing what we're going to say ahead there of time. You go. Well, I can tell you about some things that are going on at the Community Foundation. Today's kind of a mix and match show, I think, so we'll talk about a number of different areas. Um, first thing that I wanted to mention was um, Giving Tuesday. Yes, a big right event. Come on. That is Tuesday, November 30th. Um, this is always the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving, and it's a, it's a worldwide day that celebrates um, philanthropic efforts. Um, and so we've been celebrating this um, for a number of years. Um, it's an opportunity for folks to stop by, see things that have gone on at the foundation over the last year. Um, if you're interested in making a year-end donation, then is a great time to do that. So we'll have um, November 30th from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. that day. Um, we've got it set up so that you can have a drive through option if you want to drive through and grab a box lunch, make a donation. Um, or if you want to stop in and say hi to us, we're going to have our conference room set up and that's getting, that's still contingent on community health so that yeah. plan may change either way we'll have the drive-through but we w we are um, planning to offer the in-person option if folks want to stop in and have lunch with us in person um, i hear a rumor wry is going to be there i heard that rumor i think from about 11 to 1 you guys yeah. will be broadcasting we'll have some interviews we'll have an exciting presentation during that time frame as well Ooh. so stay tuned for more details can't Let's wait listen see what's going on um, and we do have two matching opportunities available again this year. Um, we have um, a matching opportunity for a new fund that we've created, the Lake Manitow Association Sustainability and Maintenance Fund, um, and also Promise Indiana 529. Um, that is a fund that we've helped with last year as well. Um, we have $5,000 available for each of those funds on a dollar for dollar match. Um, each, an individual donor can make a contribution of up to $500 per fund to qualify for the match. Obviously, you can give more than that, but right. um, $500 per fund per donor is what would qualify for that match. So, um, of course, Lake Manitow is, is our biggest natural resource in our community. Yes, it is. Um, and the Lake Manitow Association has been doing a great job of making sure that it's it's in good shape and continue some ongoing maintenance. So this fund will help with... Um, making sure that the lake is around for the future and in good shape. So I'm um, very excited to get that started. And, and Promise Indiana um, is an effort that started a few years ago to help area students create 529 college savings accounts. Okay. So these accounts are ones that families create um, and can make contributions to. And then those funds um, are actually invested and used to create earnings. And then when students arrive at college um, at that age, um, they can use this for educational expenses. One question we often get is, well, what if my child isn't planning to go to a four-year college? Well, this, this can cover a number of things, anything educational related. So if they're, if they're planning to go to a four-year college, you can cover that. Planning to go to a community college for two years, get an associate's degree, covers that. Um, there's also a lot of opportunities for trainings or certificates that, that a 529 account can help pay for. So um, start saving now for the future and, and help build up um, funds for when that college or education experience arrives and help pay for it. So, yeah. Um, so this, this fund helps um, a number of students. I think we have um, about 30% of the students in um, Rochester and Caston schools enrolled that are eligible. Um, Tippecanoe Valley and Akron are covered through a Kosciuszko County program. So we have all of Fulton County covered one way or the other. Um, but if there's families that are listening and say, hey, I want more information about that, um, you can always get in contact with us. Betty Martens, the project coordinator, will 
um, can help families work through that process of creating that. So, and there are some matching opportunities for the families as well if they meet certain incentives or participate in a number of community activities. So, um, so Lake Manitou Association and also the Promise Indiana 529 plan um, fund, those are both matched dollar for dollar up to $500 with a total of 5,000 each available. So if you're interested in either of those, stop by and see us on November 30th. Okay. Say hi, have yeah. some lunch, learn a little yeah. bit about what the foundation's been doing. So, um, A couple other things that are going on. Um, we're getting close to scholarship time. Um, we will be having scholarship applications available on our website starting um, in December, so first part of December, keep your eye open for that. Um, NICF.org, and you can click on the Fulton County link to um, look at the scholarships um, that are available and start that process. So um, I encourage students to check that out. Um, as we get toward the end of the year, if you have some extra time over Christmas break and New Year's, um, it would be a great time to apply for those as well. So um, looking at um, some other things that are going on, some recent grants that the foundation has made. Um, it's been interesting this year. We've had the opportunity to help with, with some new programs and, and some familiar ones. Um, some grants that we've made recently, um, we're able to um, provide support to the Fulton County Drug Court. Um, this is something that's been interesting as we've seen develop and, and be successful. Um, the concept is that you help folks work out of a bad situation. Right. You don't just say, okay, this is the crime, here's the punishment, you'll spend your time in jail. This, this is something that has helped people work through it. There's some, some incentives, some extra testing, some, some support um, to really have the goal of helping somebody um, work out of maybe a bad situation they may find themselves in. So this has been exciting to see how this has developed. Of course, over the last year we've been able to support a number of recovery-focused programs, things like um, the Celebrate Recovery programs that are going on, um, Recovery Cafe, Intrepid Phoenix. Um, we are able to participate in a Road to Recovery event earlier this spring. And um, this is just another one of those tools that's available to help folks really recover from a situation that may not be ideal. Okay. Instead, of, instead of just saying, hey, you've done it, you've got to pay for it, you, here are the results. Um, helping folks work out of that situation. So really exciting to help there. Um, another thing that has been a pretty significant thing is um, with, with the pandemic and things happening, um, We've seen um, increase in domestic violence and situations like yeah. that. Um, we don't have a facility in Fulton County that serves Fulton County residents, but Kosciuszko County has the Beeman Home. Um, and they have a program called the, the Rapid Rehousing Program to help get individuals out of a bad situation and into a better situation. We, we actually had the um, the opportunity to work with Beeman Home on a couple of cases working to find local services while they work to to find a better situation for individuals. So um, this is something that they've really seen a big increase and they keep telling us make sure and let people know that we're still here and we're still serving through this pandemic. So, um, so this program helps individuals who may be in a bad situation find a better situation, get out of that situation or work through the situation that they're in. So um, Beam at Home has been a wonderful resource for local individuals that, that need this, this type of assistance. So we've been able to help there. Um, another thing that's a, a different organization but kind of the same program, the Akron, Akron Lost Donis Club. Um, they are putting together a series of community mm -hmm. concerts and entertainment for 2022 over in the Akron area. Um, so looking forward to some bands and some um, exciting community events. Of course, for a number of years, the Akron Area Art League had, had been able to help with this program. Um, and, and the Lost Donis Club is bringing this back and working to um, provide some community events when, when these concerts had been done in the past. Of course, Akron has a nice downtown square yeah. that you can set up in, have a, has a stage there and a great space for a concert. 
Um, so it's exciting to see the Lost Donnas bringing this program back. So I'm looking forward to some good entertainment in 2022. And then another um, new project, I say new project, this is more an expansion on a current project, but um, Lakeside Park is a city park. It's out where the spillway to Lake Manitow and the boat launch for the DNR okay. and we have the beach out there yeah. um, and a number of spaces. Um, a neat fishing pier, but um, they have had a small um, butterfly garden out there and some benches. Um, just a nice quiet space to get away from everything and they're working on putting in a gazebo out there to, to expand um, the options and protect some of the some of the wildflowers that are growing out there and also offer another space for somebody to just get out and relax. We have, have an awesome area out there um, that's I think a lot of people don't even realize that it's out there. So right. it's one of one of our community's hidden secrets. But um, a, a group of folks got together and said, "Well, we could we could start working to expand this." So looking forward to that um, that happening. We're able to grant to that. So I mean, it's kind of interesting when we talk about these four grants that I mentioned. Um, we've talked a lot in the past few years about um, community funds community support grants, these are all community support grants, um, impact grants, of course this year we've been able to award ones to things like the new county park, um, some Akron Trail extensions, um, looking at things like pickleball and splash pads, um, but it, it's really neat to see how um, these funds are available. I mean, we're, we're sitting here and talking about $16,000 in grants right now but, yeah. um, that we mentioned this morning, but um, total this year we've been able to support over um, two hundred thousand dollars in projects through these community grants and we have have right at a quarter of a million dollars available um, this year we have a couple of grants that are in process um, so we're looking forward to spending that money by the end of this year but the neat thing about that is since it's an endowment fund we'll come back next year and probably be talking about another quarter million dollars worth of grants that have gone back into the community. So I'm um, just a big thank you to donors who have made these gifts to these community funds and said we don't necessarily know what projects are going to be coming up but we know that local folks are going to be looking at this and making wise decisions about this. So thank you to all the donors who have made these grants possible. Um, so you, you think about a quarter of a million dollars in our community that makes a pretty big impact. Yeah, absolutely so, it does. Um, something else that I wanted to mention, of course, it's the middle of November. Yes. Almost Thanksgiving. Yes. Then another holiday after that, and then we have New Year. So, um, just remind folks about um, end of year giving. Yeah. We always like to talk about that. Of course, Giving Tuesday is a great time to make that gift. But um, we also have a lot of donors that make gifts in the form of something other than cash. Okay. And a lot of times, it's more beneficial for donors. Um, I always preface this by saying I'm not an accountant, I'm not a financial planner, please talk with your individual planner or tax um, yeah. preparer about this because each situation is a little bit different but um, a lot of times when folks look at end of year giving there are, there are gifts um, that are more beneficial than cash that they can give. Um, things like appreciated assets. So we think about stocks or in some cases real estate or other types of gifts. Um, and the neat thing about that is at this time if it's an appreciated asset and somebody sells that they have to pay capital gains tax on that. Oh. Um, whereas if somebody transfers it to a qualified charity, Community Foundation being one of those, there's a number of other great charities in our community um, they can actually transfer that and not have to deal with those capital gains tax. So a lot of times it actually, we, we talk about the cost of the gift, it costs donors less to make a gift of appreciated assets. Um, something else that's been a pretty significant um, impact over the last few years is um, the IRS has implemented, implemented some, some laws that allow um, donors to make a charitable rollover from their IRA. Okay. Um, once you hit a 
certain age, you're required to take a distribution each year, whether you want it or not. Yeah. Um, if somebody dr transfers a um, donation from their IRA directly to a charity, then that can count towards their required minimum distribution and also um, they don't have to claim that as income. Ooh. So again, that's a that's a situation to talk with your tax planner about how yeah. that would affect that. Um, but but a donor can can do up to a hundred thousand dollars in a calendar year um, to qualified charity. So so those are just a couple of examples where donors can actually make a contribution and and save some tax dollars. Um, that amount will vary based on individual situations, but. Um, great opportunities for somebody to make a gift and, and save some taxes and help direct it to something that they're passionate about locally. So um, exciting on that. Um, the last thing that I wanted to mention is um, just kind of some logistics things about the Community Foundation. We're in the process of implementing a new software database. Okay. Um, it's kind of exciting in a headache kind of way at first, yeah, but I know exactly um, we're, looking, we're looking forward to this being a, a better um, service to our donors. Um, so in the future, fund founders will be able to actually get online and be able to look up information about their fund, uh, make it a more seamless process for the donors. Um, donors that have donor advised funds will actually be able to make recommendations of grants online. Um, we don't have this all implemented yet, but we're working on it. I just want to let everybody know that that will be coming up. Um, we'll have the opportunity for donors to actually um, receive information by email instead of right now we mail out paper statements, which some folks prefer. We'll still have that option if somebody prefers that. Um, but um, with the online system, it'll it'll give us opportunity to be able to share even more information with donors and, and then be able to look at things real time. Right now we can we can still see things real time but a lot of times somebody will have to call in and say can you give me information about this. But we're excited this being an opportunity for donors to actually be able to interact with it in the future. So so again stay tuned for more details. Um, if, if you have a fund with us look for some information coming in the near in the next few months as we make these implementations about uh, new opportunities for you to be able to be involved and, and see how this process works and we're hoping that this is a positive change it's it's something that's been overdue for a while and, and we're looking forward to offering an even better service to donors um, who want to make an impact so same, same grants though we'll still be making grants we'll still be doing everything that we've done it's just a, a little bit more opportunities for folks to see information about their funds. So, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so that's our mix and match. Can we call it a variety show? Sure can. All right. Hey, this is. I think this was the first ever Community <laughs> Foundation variety show. So yes. Just a couple of reminders about things coming up. Of course, the scholarships start looking in December um, on our website nicf.org um, for applications available. If you have questions or concerns about that, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Allison Heidi, our scholarship coordinator, is always happy to, to help folks through the process. Um, end of year giving coming up, so be planning for that. Giving Tuesday, we're going to close with that November 30th, 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. We'll have lunch available. We'll have a live broadcast on WROI. Um, we'll have matching available for the Lake Manitow Association Sustainability and Maintenance Fund and the Promise Indiana 529 Fund. Um, if you can't make it in that day, we do have the opportunity for online giving. So um, if you want to do that, we welcome those types of year-end gifts as well. So, and we will be looking forward to seeing everyone on November 30th, celebrating some of the things that donors have helped us do throughout the past year and um, celebrating really another wonderful year in our community. Looking forward to it. Uh, I know it's going to be a good time and Giving Tuesday is one of my favorite holidays. So well, that's the way we aim to please. So <laughs> if folks have questions about anything we talked about, of course you can find us online, nicf.org. Um, you can like us on Facebook. 
um, Northern Indiana Community Foundation on Facebook. Um, give us a call, 574-224-3223, or stop by our office at 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any questions or ideas you have for our community. All right, Ryan, thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you again in December after Giving Tuesday. Looking forward to it. All right, thanks so much. Thanks, Paul.